This is the video for the higher level content from B3.2 on transport, particularly transport in plants. So one of the big transport ideas that we've discussed in plants is this um, movement called transpiration. So transpiration initiates when water vapor evaporates from these stomata and then using cohesion and adhesion, water moves as a continuous column up through the plant. Now, we've said that that can kind of be a bad thing, right? That water loss could be bad for the plant. But it's also the way that plants get water to move through their entire um, structure. So in that way, transpiration is good. We need transpiration to happen. That water has to move upward through the plant. However, transpiration can sometimes slow down or stop. And there's a few reasons for that. One is that the outside air might be really humid. Water will only evaporate here if there is a difference in water potential. So like if it's very dry out here and moist inside the plant, that will drive fast rates of evaporation. But in times where it's very humid out here, transpiration will cease. Perhaps um, transpiration will cease when the stomata close. So stomata are those openings on the underside of the leaves that allow gases in and out. And then of course water leaves in the same uh, way. But at night, when the plant isn't photosynthesizing, those stomata tend to close because gas exchange isn't necessary. And so that can stop transpiration along with any times when the plant has lost its leaves. So I'm thinking about when winter is coming or something happens with the plant. When pulling is no longer an option, so when transpirational pull, when that pulling force stops, a plant can't rely on transpiration to get the water moving through the plant. It has to push the water in through the roots and create all this force that originates from the bottom of the plant instead. So when that pulling force isn't happening anymore, what plants are going to do is establish a lot of pressure in their roots and that pressure then forces the water up through the xylem. So the way that they're gonna do that is that they're going to use active transport to pump mineral ions, I have them here in red, actively pump mineral ions from the soil into their roots. And of course that requires energy because we're going up the concentration gradient. Well, what always follows a high solute concentration? That would be water. So that water moves into the roots via osmosis. And you can imagine this root blowing up with water that increases the pressure, forcing pressure up through the xylem or forcing that water up through the xylem. And that concept of pressure is also going to be really important here as we move into a different part of the plant's vascular tissue, and that's something called the phloem. So the phloem doesn't necessarily help transport things upward like the xylem. It can go upward or across or down. Um, the phloem is going to take materials from source to sink. So source is wherever the carbon compounds are being made. So like maybe this is a sugar being made in the leaf and it's going to transport them to wherever those carbon compounds are being stored. Okay. So we call that the sink and we're always moving here from source to sink. So let's take a look at how that might actually play out. So here I have a source cell. I'm just going to say it's a leaf and it's making a carbon compound like a sugar that is going to be actively pumped into the phloem. This is something called phloem loading. It's an active transport process, okay? And that creates a high concentration of carbon compounds in the phloem. Again, what loves to follow a high concentration of solutes? Water, and that water is going to come from the xylem and it's going to move via osmosis into the phloem. This is why you always find the xylem and the phloem next to each other in those stem and root cross sections. This is going to create an area of high pressure. So we call this hydrostatic pressure, hydro meaning water. So in this area here, we're just gonna get a lot of pressure due to the input of water. That water and that um, carbon compound, those are all going to then move to areas of lower pressure. So that's going to force these carbon compounds and the water um, down into this other part of the phloem. Again, that's just due to pressure. 
then those carbon compounds are going to be actively pumped into the sink, okay? So this might be a root or a flower or something like that. They're going to be actively pumped into that sink. And now that there is no longer a high solute concentration, water will move back into the xylem via osmosis, okay? So we've got a couple of different features here that are very important, one of which are these things called companion cells. And these companion cells are helpful for that pumping process, that phloem loading, getting the carbon compounds out of the source into the phloem and out of the phloem into the sink. We're also going to notice some of these holes here, like these pits, again, that allows the movement through what we call these phloem sieve tubes, okay? So we wanna be looking at two main things, these sieve tubes, okay, these holes here that are going to allow um, those carbon compounds to move through, and then these companion cells, which are going to help with the phloem loading or the pumping back into the sink. And here's a much better picture, right? So a more three-dimensional picture. Here is my phloem, and I can see these sieve tube elements here. So there are adjoining cells, but they have large holes in their walls um, to allow that uh, stuff to move through, the carbon compounds to move through. And the rest of the cell is going to disintegrate and break down. That includes the organelles and the nucleus. So that's why the phloem has to rely on those companion cells um, for things like that active transport. So when I'm thinking about transport in plants, I want to be thinking about xylem and phloem. I want to be thinking form and function. How do these features allow the plant to move um, either water or carbon compounds to where they need to go?